<laughs> oh man, what's up everybody? Um, welcome back to Mining Diamonds. My name is Jim Jones. I have my two incredible co-hosts with me. Kia, my main man, Beef over there. Hey. Um, if you're not familiar with this type of podcast, it's not your regular podcast. You might not see your favorite rapper, but you'll see some of the most influential people when it comes to business inside of our community and also inside of this world. That is our aim to hit people on to what generational wealth really means and show them how to get near it. You heard? Um, today we have a very special guest. Would you like to tell them who the guest is? Absolutely. He is a New York City native, Brooklyn born and raised, but more importantly, Harlem businessman, our neighbor. Everyone in the community knows him, Mr. Big Russ Smith. He's going to be joining us in a second, talking about his businesses, his uh, devotion to the community, development of the community, and all the things that we can all do individually and as a collective to grow the community and make sure that, you know, Harlem remains, or not even just Harlem, but our communities remain intact, I guess, in places that we can recognize and places that we feel comfortable, places that uh, we have ownership in. And, you know, that's it. He's going to get into it and tell us his story. So I'm excited for that. What are you most excited about? Oh, I'm excited about it because, you know, if we look at it, you know, there was an article that came out recently, right? And it's the article, I don't know where it originated, maybe New York Post or New York Times or maybe uh, Daily News, but it was said something about the displacement of 22,000 Brooklyn, black Brooklyn residents that have left Brooklyn and be replaced by 30,000 white residents. So changing the dynamics in the neighborhoods of Brooklyn from being you know, mostly black to now multicultural and, and majority uh, white. Mm -hmm. And it's really based off of the economics. Mm -hmm. So, and I was talking to Russ earlier about this and I was like, everything that we face as a community you know, we would have a better time and get better results if we understood the strength of economic power, especially localized economic power. So when you have 22,000 black families moving out of a, a, a place where they're concentrated, that decreases the, 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 the buying power and the, and the power economically for that group of people in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because those 22,000 people are not just moving to the Bronx, mm -hmm. you know, they're being dispersed around the country. But not, let's not forget that they're not just moving for no reason. Like people are not getting bullied out. They waving a little bit of money in front of people's faces and people are so down on, on their chips that that money looks like a, a good idea. Maybe this could help me get back on my feet. At that point, there's nobody telling them about the power that we have, staying true to ourselves and not going nowhere, not falling for the little bit of money that they waving in front of us. Maybe they make. Maybe there might might be a better outcome if we just hold fast for a little bit, but there's not nobody out there telling our people that. Yeah, but there, there, there are people out there that are coming up with some really great solution, and, and Russ Smith is definitely the person that is doing something in the community to offset that, and that's, that's, that's why I'm honored to have him at the table today. So welcome to the table, Mr. Big Russ Smith. Appreciate it. Thank you all for having me. No, it's an honor. It's definitely an honor. That's what's up. So, you know, learning about your story was completely fascinating. You know, I love hearing about business people, uh, the ups, the downs, the trials, the tribulations. And, you know, I'm hoping that maybe you could give our listeners a little introduction to who you are, you know, set the stage. Name is Big Russ, Russ Smith, you know, own multiple businesses in Harlem uh, for over 29 years. My passion is film, film and acting. It's one of the biggest things I always loved. And the side, along from that, the money I made from acting production is going into business. So what made you switch out, like become a businessman? Well, ever since I was a kid, I always was a numbers guy. Always wanted to save money. You know, at the age of 12 years old, just being around a lot of millionaires in the room, just watching them, watching how they made money, you know, kind of inspired me. So me getting into the film business at a young age and making a lot of money, always wanted to do is open up business just to generate more money and to have, you know, free time to do what I need to do. What was your first business? First business was the barbershop. First business was the barbershop. Uh, that's the one on 8th Ave? Yeah, that's the one on 8th Ave. I call that the headquarters. All right. This year made, what, 29 years from the first one. You know, type of business that runs itself and at the same time makes good money 
and at the same time was always going to be in business for the next hundred years. And exactly like, you know, it's the service based industries that help bolster the community, you know, and, and barbershops are, are kind of like the pillars of the community. When you look at it, especially in black communities, it's where we go to congregate, where we share news, ideas, you know, talk about what's going on, current events, how it's affecting us, you know, economics, you know, it's a very, very important place in our community. And at the same time, it, it got me to know the community. Right. You know, the crazy part is funny because I've seen people grow up. It's like, man, you have a kid now. You're a grandma. You're a grandma. I'm like, damn. Like, you know, it was funny, weird, watching them grow up in front of me and at the same time employ some of them that was in front of me. Like, I had guys, kids 10 years old, start sweeping up the floor, going to the store. They're like 25 now, 29. And they always remind me of that. Wow. Remember, us, I used to work for you. I used to sweep the floor. And it went through like generations, like 10 years, another kid to come, another kid to come. So I pretty much just, just watched them come. And they see me in that neighborhood as the icon. So let me ask, you're from Brooklyn. Yep. But you opened your shop up in Harlem. Yep. One, why did you choose to do that? And then two, what was it like building the community and, and those relationships being a outsider? Well, what it was, I was looking at some spots out here in Brooklyn in the realty lake, like, look, we don't have anything out here. We have some new spots coming up in Brooklyn if you want to take, I mean, in Harlem, if you want to take a look. I said, okay, cool. So we go to Harlem. She showed me the whole roll of stores that was even open, that was brand new, not rented anything, just been renovated. I said, nah, let me get this. Let me get this. Uh, I'll take one of these spots. Did you know anything about real estate and starting a business? Did you know like anything about Harlem? No, well, yeah, I knew. I've I been going to Harlem since I was kept playing ball. Everybody, I, all my, all, most of my ball players were from Harlem. You know, I had a few family members up in Harlem. So going to Harlem, we know, was just like going to Brooklyn. And you, you know? were you were coaching at, at Gauchos, right, in the Bronx? Right? Well, I grew, I, grew up as, I grew up as a Gaucho. Okay. And then uh, as I finished college, I started coaching the Gaucho a little part-time, you know, still helping out with the developmental program that I had, had created. So you're a ball player. You played ball in college too? Played ball at uh, Malloy College out in Long Island. Uh, High Division One, played in Europe for like two, three years, played in France, Nice, uh, played in Africa, Tunis, Tunisia, so, what they call it, Germany, so short you're, time. You're a baller. Yeah, so, yeah. so if you didn't have that connection to Harlem, do you think you would have still taken the space there? Would you have, or would it have been a little too risky for you or? Risky as what? Like just coming into a whole brand new community. When, when, when you're a hustler, when you're a grinder, your business, you step outside of the box. <laughs> it could have been in Queens. If the opportunity was right and the price is right and not seeing, you know, where the location was, the location and everything, it, it doesn't matter. How did you even learn about that? Like, who was teaching you location matters? This is a good deal. Like, who taught you all of that? Was it just trial and effort? It's just trial. You know, I said, like, at the age of nine years old, saving, some, saving my money to buy a pair of sneakers, that's when I learned the value of money. Uh, my pops was a number guy, you know, money, money, money. I always, you know, wanted to do numbers. And I'm good in math, so <laughs> I'm a numbers guy. You know, I love money. I love to see the profit. I love what numbers make sense and what doesn't make sense. If the numbers didn't make sense, I wouldn't have done it. So besides the barbershop, what are some of the other businesses that you have? I just opened a little, a little diva, a little spa for little girls in the same block, juice bar, salon, had the lounge up into COVID, opened a... Uh, Locker room, another barbershop, another barbershop on 7th. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I get tired now, but you know, it's... it's serial I, entrepreneurs, yeah. what they call you. You know, it's, it's, it became so, it's just so easy to open up a business with so less. Okay, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna stop you. It's so easy to open up a business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Break that down for me. Well, Break that down. what I mean by, <clears throat> what I mean by easy, let's do a number thing. Okay, so you have, 20,000 in the bank, give or take. 800 to 800 to 1,300 you spend a week or you might spend a day. So at that 20,000, that's 1,500 going, almost 2,000. Then next week you might got to pay some bills. You might somebody, lend somebody $1,000, that's 4,000 going, 5,000 going. By the time the end of the month, 
you know, spent 8,000. But I came to you and said, look, let's open a business. This is what it take, 15,000. Ah, nah, look, now within two months, your 15,000 is gone. I could have made that 15,000 work for you for the rest of your life. Open up a business, whatever, and get the slow money coming in. By the time then, year and a half, you done got your 15,000 back and you still got your business back to grow from that. When you opened your business, was it just you or did you have partners? I don't do partners. I just, it was just me. Mm. Speak on it. Yeah, yeah. why, why, yeah. why, why? Speak on that. Well, one, let me correct. I just partnered with someone about three years ago. But to that, it, the partner is different. You got to be like me. And it's hard to find people like you in business. You got to wake up like me. You got to think numbers like me. If I say, yo, we got to do it, we got to go do this. We got to grind it out no matter what. Then I say, you know, that person, me, always had that feeling, you know, out of the 29 years, like, it was it's scary. You hear stories about partners. You always do. I learned from the best, from, like, millionaires telling me stories, billionaires telling me stories, you know, about partner. I always take things, on, you know, on face value, you know, and, and it's that energy. Right. I, you know, I used to think when people say, what's the energy and the vibe? Like, nah, it ain't that, but... When you meet up with the individual and you sit down with them and you start to see it different, and like, yo, okay, I'll do it if you want to do it. Okay, we're going to do it. i put this up, put this up. And then you say, man, no, he's just like me. He want to right. do what I want. He want to put it up. Ugh. Motivated. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, let, let, let's give it a shot. But over the years, 27 years, only up until four years ago, I haven't ran into that person. Mm. Mm. Jim brought up a point, right? You don't necessarily have to have a partner but you do have to have a support system, right? So what did your support system look like when you were starting your first business? At the time, it was just me. Mm. At the time, you know. <laughs> so you were figuring it out as yeah, you went you know along? What? I remember opening it. I had just did a commercial. Commercial was big and went crazy. Six months, made about 150000 I said, perfect time to open up a business. You know, that's when I was, again, was looking at, looking for spots, looking for locations, got it, put the money up front, grind it out, grind it out. At the, and at the beginning, things were slow. You know, the money never comes in or whatever. It was times when I had to take away home money mm. and put it into the shop. Mm. How was that at home? It was balanced, but you have to understand, you just invested something there. You know, you see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. It's going to move slow, but you see the bigger picture if you just put that work in. When you put the work in, it automatically shows up. If you have step, it's not going to show up. So I remember, you know, ex-wife saying, why don't you just get the business and close it down? You know, and I looked at her. I said, yeah, we we got two different mindsets. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't come from that. That, that cloth right there where we just shut down, we, we grind it out, you know? And then you got to figure out, okay, with the space you got, how much money is it bringing you? Right. How many barbers you can put in there to make X amount of dollars to, to make up for that? Because you know, now I'm in there every day, I'm looking for more and more ideas to bring revenue. And I remember for, in that first year also is putting two uh, uh, games in there. Like arcade games? Arcade game arcade game there making money off that. So now things are starting to come. Now I'm getting more barbers. So now things are starting to turn now. So fast forward back, if I would just listen to us say, you know what, I'm shutting it down, money down, and I didn't even give it a shot. I didn't even put the hustle in. What I just went on somebody else's mind, said whether it was my partner or not, what she was telling me to just shut down. You get out of it what you put in it. And and, it's, and what people do, and what people don't understand with business, it's a twenty four hour hustle. There's no such thing as I'm tired. You lay down, you lay down. Simple as that. No days off at all. No days off. You have a vision. It's you have once, to execute. Once the vision is there, that you know, you know, that's it. Absolutely. Right. What's that like when you're dealing, you know, with your wife? Like, was she understanding about that grind? Or, you well, know? you got to think about when people are not. And you had kids too, right? right? Had, so had a young kid, just got back from Europe. You know what I said, I'm a young son. But if people are not kind of cut from that era, that cloth, or you didn't grow up like that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand it. I right. grew up with parents who was just hustling. My whole family just hustles, grinds, and making it happen. So it was already in the blood. You follow what I'm saying? 
What's the difference between, in your opinion, a hustler and a businessman? So meaning a hustler means you're gonna get up, you're gonna work, you're gonna do it, you're gonna make it happen, you're gonna make sure that that bill is paid. That's the hustle. And it's the same thing, you know, as a businessman, you're, you're a businessman, but you continue to do the right things and make the right decisions, make the right moves, just the right, the right meetings, all to make the hustle happen. So it combines together. Yeah, you definitely can't have one without the other. The more hustle in you, the more you become a businessman. But you need you need both of them you, to you, become you, one of them. You need both because you could be a businessman and have no hustle. With no hustle. No hustle. Exactly. Now yeah. that's like you're not stepping outside the box. One hundred percent. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm a businessman. I'm in here. Man, the hustle's out here. Right. So how do you move out the box and go? It's also getting out of your own way. Yeah, and, you, you have. Know, to. And I, I, I like the idea that you were like, yo, I'm trying to, you know, when you said that you put in, you know, what is it, arcades, maybe vending machines in the store to create more opportunities, revenue, that, that little bit of profit, that could, that could be a make or break situation it's, right there. Now, the object is to turn your hustle into a business. That's the object. You're, you, you can turn your hustle, the machines, into a full-blown business. Now, that same model you got here, you did it 20, 20 times, times over up. in 20 different places. Now, you turn that hustle into a business. That's the objective. So every hustler can become a businessman. Business, yep. That doesn't mean he's not a hustler. If you understand what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no way possible that everybody can be a boss. Nobody, it's not too many people think like a boss. Most people think like they want to go to work and punch in a nine to five and have aspirations of being a boss while they work in this nine to five. The people that be in the boss, like I told you, don't care about waking up at nine to five. They wake up when they want to, you heard? And most likely when they wake up, they made a dollar when they were sleeping. Yeah, that, that sleep while you sleep, eat while you sleep, <laughs> you know? You know? Like, and that's, and, and, and that's what it is. Like, but we hope everybody gets the gist of what it takes to make money is, is what I say, because I know a shitload of workers that make a shitload of money, right. but mm -hmm. they still workers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That don't mean that they, if you take them out the box, they're not going to make no more money. If you take that work away from them or that job away from them, they're going to be lost in the sauce. Right. they just a worker no matter how much money they made. You know what I mean? So just don't get being a worker misconstrued as they not popping. Like, shit, there's millionaires that's workers. Yeah. You could go work for salaries. Google and yeah. get a million dollars salary. salary. Like, you could work for a hedge fund and make $10 million, but you're still a worker in that capacity. Like, you're not doing nothing extra outside of what your job description is. To become a boss, you, boss like you said, you got to step outside the box. You got to understand the responsibilities and the grind it's going to take to start a business or to start a hustle or to just go out on the limb and say, fuck everything. This is what I want to do when I'm dedicating my time, my energy and risking it all, whether I fail or succeed, this is what I'm on. I'm not working part-time just in case I fail to succeed. No, if I'm going this route, this is the route I'm going. God bless me because that's it. I got to make it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, 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 that, and, that's the, and that's the hustle for. <laughs> Did you have any like failures along the way that you... Uh, you you know, things that just didn't quite go the way you wanted it to. Is that like a, it to. like a like a, a big Russ toy store store that never came to fruition, or a restaurant? Well, or? I, I had a well, I, I wouldn't say anything that I just kind of fell because I try to pick and choose. Right. You know, I think the plan out for it's like okay, it fails. We say our L's are our lessons as yep. opposed to losses. So is there some lessons that you learned? Oh, it's a lot of it's, it's a you know what it's a lot of lesson lesson meaning, you know, one of the lessons. Know that okay, not making that rent mm. that month. So okay, now you know it, it's 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 the rainy day. Right. You, you got to learn that. One thing I tell people all the time, it's not always going to be honey, sweets, and cherries and smell. I tell people all the time, even today in business, you got to take the bitter with the sweet. Mm. 100%. If you don't understand that, man, don't 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 get in business. And and, and I like to tell people, you're never gonna be able to save save for a rainy day until you get rained on. Oh, uh, trust me. And, and early on, it was like that. No one like, man, got rent coming up. Like, yo, it was slow. Got to go in that stash. Got to go in that house rent money. Now I got to hustle it back. Nah, yeah. a perfect example. Uh, COVID mm -hmm. shut down. Mm -hmm. I got nine businesses fighting with SBA, mm -hmm. fighting with my landlord. Out my pocket, 
out my <laughs> you, 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 so you, know, you know where I'm going with it. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Out my pocket. Hmm. Out my pocket. 65K. Mm. Out every, my pocket. Every month too, right? Like that, that the, the, until my, it kicks some some kicking. But the bill, my overhead a, a month, my my monthly bills what people don't understand. And I my monthly bills is like fifty thousand a month. Mm. Nah, that makes sense. People don't people don't look at that, you know, and people always ask me, Russ, how do you do it? And when the and the whole pandemic dropped, nobody didn't, yo, Russ, you good? You need a thousand dollars, you need five hundred dollars, mm. you know, but not that I you know what? but not that I that that I, I look for it, but you know, this is this this but is that's, the, but this that's the part of being a boss. Of course, it was, let me tell you something. I don't take it personal, I know what it is because you know what? I could lose, I tell people all the time, I could lose everything today. Everything. Start back over in a one bedroom apartment with a metro car and still be back on top in another I, year. I thoroughly believe that, mm. man. That's, that's how it. bad I am. That's, that's how mm. you're wired. I'm, I'm that's a, how you're wired. It, 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 that's like, a hustler's mentality. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like, you, and, and, I, and I tell people that they look at me crazy like, yeah, I don't care. I can lose right. everything I got, you know, whatever, I'm still gonna provide for my kids. Gonna go t- gonna, gonna, gonna go take a nine to five in my specialty, which we is coaching figure, film. We're we gonna, gonna figure, figure out. everything out till I and, get back to where I need exactly. to be. Exactly. And, and that's exactly. it. You got some people who get in a situation like that go commit suicide. Who self-destruct. Can't deal with it. Self-destruct. Yeah, like I just they I'm gonna they be scared to go back. They scared I, to start over. Me. But they that's, scared to, You'll catch me on the A train in Brooklyn like this, on the train like this, sleep. And guess what? The the people, and guess yeah. what? The people that know you. Gonna be like, nah, give him a minute. He gonna be back. Oh, yeah, he yeah, not, yeah. He not one of those. Nah, Trust nah. me, bro. Nah. You do it. Yep. You nah. dig? The real people that know you gonna know you gonna back. bounce back quick. Of, of course, you know, and that's the, and that's what will keeps you what keeps you grounded. You know, the absolute key, like you being an artist, yo, I gotta keep coming to hit. We gotta, we gotta come, we gotta start something. We gotta keep going. It, it keeps right. you grounded. And I try to tell people, like, look, I was blessed, one, that I have so many talents. Like I'm I, I'm so many from basketball, from just the theaters alone, like stage, film, knowing how to work a camera, know how to direct and write. Like I can never be broke. Right. You know, I said like, I mean, the business, all the business that I have, I made it through the film industry, my money. I get a roll this year. You know what? Oh, I just got 50,000 flow. You know what? I'm going to open a business. Go open a business. Put some away. Go man. I want to think like they always want to stay on top, you know, on top right. of the game. Because now when the rainy day came, which was COVID, which is a huge That's rainy a huge day. That's a huge rainy day. That showed like, like you know, people was like losing their business. People like, I gotta shut down. And I was feeling bad. I'm like, you gotta shut down. What are you talking about? Nah, you gotta figure it out. I'm telling you, like, you gotta figure your rust. Nah, I said, nah, you gotta figure it out. Right. You know, how, how can I help you? What, what you need to do? You know, because when I was seeing people, you know, people on the news, you know, they crying, I had boys calling like, yo, I said, nah, gotta figure it out. They said, oh, Russ, you make sense. And no, it ain't easy. It's, it's, it's hard, but you got to figure it out. You have to, boy. That was- You have to. Listen, to, so f- imagine us as entertainers and they shut no everything shows. down. No like, shows. No shows. shows being Ooh, the number the one money maker for all entertainers. Oh, that money that come in at 30 and 40 every weekend you've been, been depending on for the what? past 20 years. Gone. Yeah, shows. Just what, was, stop. what was that like for Show. you? What? Nah, that was- it, it, it don't hit you until you start to, to like the third weekend and you add it up. <laughs> start adding up. Like, yo, bro, I'm like, like I'm down 150, 200. <laughs> like he said, I'm not one of the regular, I was able to think outside the box yeah. and figure out my situation. And now that pandemic has been the best thing that could have happened for me in my life. And not saying, I'm not talking, minus everything that happened, my right. prayers go out to everybody who was affected by it. But in that, time where they shut everything down, everything opened up for me. Right. That's my mind I'm talking right. about. Yeah. And I was able to think outside the box where it put me in a position today to have mining diamonds, to have the deal with Amazon, to have the, the yeah. gym, to have all of these things come together was because of the pandemic shutting down, forcing the hustler to think yeah. outside the yeah. box right. to hustle some more money. Up. Once again, that's an example of leadership. That's example to separate the wheat from the tear, like the employee from the boss, the risk versus the reward. If you're not willing to take the risk, you know, and knowing that the risk is there, there's always a, there's always a case where you're going to be like, 
there might be a situation like 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 the pandemic where you know shows are going to not be available. There might be something else that might happen. You know, it might be a flood in a barbershop or something like that. You know, you're going to have to come out of pocket. You're going to have to you have workers that are complaining. They're going to be hitting you saying they can't make rent and they're looking for you, mm-hmm. you know. But then that's the situation that builds that that spirit that 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 builds you into that boss, that person, that this that leadership, being able to take advantage of a situation where people are like, yo, I don't see any hope. Wait, wait, wait and again. And as he was saying, you have to lead by example. And one of the things that always made me so good is the way I treated them. Mm. And they see the way I move. I wasn't moving like a selfish boss. That was different. You know, I always told employees, you know, you will never have to buy anything. I buy your jackets, your capes, I give you this and that. If I get a new barber today, tomorrow, I give them two weeks free rent. Hold up. You, you know, you have to move like that as a boss. Like, I don't agree with Dame, whatever. But he's a smart individual, and some of the things that I've experienced with him through our time of doing business and shit like that. One of the things that I remember happening was uh, a designer of ours started making a shitload of money through us and shit like that. So I'm like, uh, like you better buy some Rolexes for Christmas. Dame was like, no, 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 we buy him the Rolex for Christmas. He was like. You see how he's smiling right now? We don't need that from him. The more we show the employees that they just as important as we are, the more they gonna show you how bad they are when how, when it comes to them doing their job. They're gonna go over and, and, yeah, and above and beyond. Yeah. In that relationship, it takes another. So those are one of the lessons that were dope for me as I move forward in doing business and making sure that people around me are taken care of just as well as myself per se, in all moderation, if you, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, you know what I mean? Which, which is a good thing, even like, again, going back to the COVID thing, I would check up on my employees, y'all good? Y'all need anything? Y'all, did y'all eat? Or whatever, at least that's the least you can offer them. Right. Was, Damn, somebody did call me, check up and make sure, you know, we eating, or we, we good. You know, I used to get all this free stuff from Nike, come to the shop, yo guys, huh, shirts, sneakers, they looking at me like, I'm like, like and that's a boss. That's that's what we do. I, I want to see y'all happy. I t- I, I tell them all the time. I want to see y'all. I want to see y'all win. Was there ever a time when you were taking care of your employees, both of y'all, right? You taking care of your people, and there was not enough for you. All the time. All the time. That's right. That's 99, almost one hundred percent. I could, I was just about to say that I can 100%. remember. So we do shows. Your shows go. Oh, your price goes to how popping you are. It was a time I was getting eighty, ninety thousand dollars a show for a ball, and then the, the 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 jackass I've been to so many people who turned around and kicked me in the ass, and my show went down to ninety to ten, and you know. So at that point, is I got a staff that's used to a certain way that we move, and because what's going on with me, I try not to let it, let it affect my staff or. My family. So there's been times where I've gotten shows where I might have got my first half, but the second half that we went out to go for, I didn't get nothing off of that. Mm-hmm. But they don't know that. But mm-hmm. all of them got paid. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you right. understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So the, I know how that feels to end up just feel like you, but you're not. You. It's a certain gratification to know that you're able to still be a boss in those situations and make sure the people around you are taken care of. Because you know, sooner or later, you're gonna get the to come up anyway. It's gonna yeah, come yeah. back to you tenfold. Yeah. It always happens I always like do. that. It all, it, it, all, it all, and it's funny, you, you mentioned it because I feel the same way, it's just being blessed from having all these businesses and be able to employ the community. Mm-hmm. And that's that's always been the goal, mm-hmm. to employ the community. People will come home from jail, yo, I need a cut, let's go. I'm gonna show you how you get your license. Mm. Uh, you, you know, just in everything I do, always employ the community, even having, Four businesses on one block. People come out like, "Oh, Rush, you got the whole block." I said, "Nah, I want the city." Mm. That's that's my whole mentality. No, I want the city. Imagine if I can get the whole city who I can employ, and then as minorities, we on top again. Once again, that's an example <laughs> that's of strong the, economic power. You know, what I'm saying that's the whole, the whole, you know, the whole idea. To, you know, what? for them to see. Them businesses lined up together and know, yeah, I'm a threat to you if you outside of the community, you know, rocking with her. So let me ask you this. You being a pillar in Harlem, especially when it comes to 
entrepreneurship and helping the community out in that. So with all the gentrification going on, do you see a way for us to combat that where the people to start benefiting from the gentrification. I'm, for me, I'm not mad at gentrification. Harlem was a nasty looking place. To, to, yeah. to, it was. It didn't look good for yeah. a long time. And yeah. now it's starting to look dope, Great, which man. is dope. I'm not mad at that part of gentrification. I'm mad at the part that our people are not more involved and they pushing yes. our people out due to whatever the circumstances are. So now, how do we combat that where we are benefiting from all of the gentrification that's going on around us? We, you know, once again, it's, it's leading by an example. We, 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 if you, you see the way you think, see the way I think, think. Now we just get, get, get surround ourselves with like minded individuals. With them individuals. Mm -hmm. Like, look, y'all, here's the plan. I can figure it out. I, we can gang up and I know how to make it happen. We, we put this community together. We start getting this, start getting that. Everybody play their role. You got credit, you got money, you know people. Let's start off with this one thing. And then what we do, we put it out there. The new team has arrived, such and such. We don't. So now the folks who's trying to come in and take, they're like, yo, did you see what's, what they're putting out now? They got a new team. This is their move. They making moves now. We talking with banks. They talking with other banks. We talking with all the community leader we gather. But the problem with that is like crabs in the barrel. Mm. Everybody want to take the side money. Mm. Mm. You know, anybody want to take this? What is the challenge f dealing with those crabs in the barrel? Like, how do you get around that? It's, it, it's like being cut from that from that cloth. It's only a f it's only a few pieces of it. So now, it, what it really starts at the younger generation. How do we mold? How do we, we teach them that? Mm. We got to teach. We got we got to set that goal. So you, now you're going from like ten. Yeah, I'm at ten years old. And you get that ten, that uh, into that twenty. So now you got that gap. As they tend, they moving up. So now you got that generation right. that flows in, maybe a certain amount of thousands of kids. And now all that certain amount of thousand, they become these community people. They become these banks people. They come to your mind because why? We are coaching them. Right. We are teaching them. Like now, I do so much of that, so much of that in that community that a lot of people don't know. Like I'm setting up to take a photo of 200 kids in front of my shop with a shirt and a tie. Just a, just a photo, just a picture. And I told people, I said, the picture's going to tell a thousand, it's going to speak for a thousand words. So when you look at that picture with those uh, thousand, with 200 young men just in the picture with shirt and tie, what are you thinking? Right. Like, it's a picture of a of not only success, but the potential for success. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you, now you kind of like, you know, if you're looking on the outside, you try to come in and you trying to regulate, you're like, yo, look what he's building. He's he's like Malcolm. He's like, look at the followers he got. And, and I'm standing there with a suit on. I got my crew in back of me of, of youngest that's going to be coming up of the next two, three generations. And I'm molding their mind. I'm training them to become these, these, these businessmen in their community. You know, even they go off to college to come back and rep their community and hire their community and to rebuild their community. So it comes back in full circle. How do you work with the local elected officials, the bankers, right? The people who give the money, give you the space, like are they, you know what I'm saying? Like well, on that level, how can we? It's, it's different. Like, okay, along with my schedule, I just became the vice president of the precinct community council. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that means. I do no. not. No, speak on it, please. In every precinct in the city, every police station in the city, they have a committee, a president, vice president, treasurer, sergeant of arms, and so on, keeps them in it. And they work closely with the the, uh, the commanding officer, what they call the CEO of a precinct, like hand in hand, like this. You almost, it's almost like we are cops, but with no guns. Mm. Because what we say kind of say so, because we are the community, we are the voice. So I became the vice president of that precinct area up and home because I've been in, in the pillows, you know, so long with dealing with that community. Everybody know me from all the business owners, you know, and et cetera. And all the politicians also are connected with that. So now I'm kind of connected with the politicians, the, the assembly man. No. But one thing I do make it clear to all of them, I'm not the yes man. 
I'm not here for all the sad money. I'm not here for all the bull crap. And I let that be known because they tell with my strong presence. I'm about the kids in, in the community. Like I always tell them, I don't need nothing from y'all personally because I've been doing over 25 years on my own. Right. So we just need resources just to continue, just to make the community strong and, can, and, and continue to build. Is it difficult to get money? It can't be because I know a, a lot of people and I know, you know, what I'm trying to do. If you're going back it or you're not. So when the time comes, say, well, you had the opportunity. You wasn't for this cause. And right. you wonder why these kids are doing what they, mm -hmm. they doing. Right. Right. I, I, years ago, I, I wanted to open it. I had a concept for a deli and I wanted to open it up. And I, I just thought that if I had money that I can just go ahead and get something, you know, but I was faced with such a political upheaval. Like all this stuff, then I was like, I, I just really was like, wow, it's, this is going to cost me five times as much just to get permits and to get like all the things I want to do and deal with the community and deal with the kids and this, then the third and provide food services and beverages and all this other stuff. And I didn't have that guidance. So I kind of left that up. I kind of was like intimidated by that opportunity. And I was like, well, shit, you know, I didn't have a, a pool of people I can go to. To, to raise funds for or even to align with me to make sure that, hey, do you have these relationships within this government and in this administration that can help me get past certain things so I can open up this store and this, that, and the third. So I find it like very, very, very important that you have that, you've been able to infiltrate that system and work within it, you know, because it's really intimidating. You know? it, 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 it can be if, if, you know, if you don't know no one, you know, just like you said, you didn't have have anyone. I just thought it would be simple. Yeah, I, I mean, it can it can be simple if you have the right person to speak with and they can explain it to you. Like I get people all the time to me, yo, Russ, I'm looking at a lease. What do I need to ask for in the lease? Mm -hmm. Open up a new business. Well, I tell this is the first thing you want. Don't take a three year lease. You take a start off with a ten year lease. You you're not going to get it. You might get six with an automatic renewal. Get a good guy letter in, get six months of build out. You want X, Y, Z. Now you want to add the COVA law into it in case COVA go up. You have to pay money. This can you get out as a good guy letter. So it's it's, it's a lot, lot, a lot of things in it. You know, just a lot of little things that people come to me like, well, you know, and I tell them it's like, it's like kindergarten work to me now. Mm. I say, okay, do this, ask for this, ask for that, ask for that. So all of this knowledge, right? You learned this along the way or was along, somebody schooling you? Along the way. You learn, it's like, like you said, you, you, you're taking your L's and you learn, you're learning from certain things. You know, certain leases. Oh, you know, I never took my lease to a lawyer to look at it right. unless I know I had to for certain things. But in certain leases, it's kind of self-explanatory. You just got to think a little. And if you don't know, no problem. Take it to a lawyer, you know. But you know what I mean? Leases, I don't look over the... My career, like, like, man, oh, I know, no, just ask for a good guy. Like, oh, no, nah, tell me you need six months because, you know, you're ordering stuff from Europe to come over, so you need more build-out time. Mm. Oh, no, nah, tell him this. No, um, tell him this. So it became, it's like fun, you know, you know, looking at. So I'm always schooling people with that. I, I just had three people, like, in two weeks come to me by Lee. Ross, you know, I just got out of number. I wish I'd have came to you first. So don't worry about it. We're going to rock it. This is what you need to so do. So you help these people for free? For free, yeah. I don't charge them. I don't, anything I do especially in the community, because I know that the fee is not there. I'm not, yeah, mm -hmm. I know if you come and you try to start, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's, it's interesting, because I feel like nowadays some people are like, don't take me to coffee, don't try to pick my brain, pay me. I'm not, not me. Right, like I feel like that's a prevailing attitude. Because I've, I've, you know, I've been blessed. You know, when you've been, when you've been blessed, man, it's like, nah, whatever, what you want, no, Call him, tell him Russ sent you, he got you, tell him to take care of you. It, you know, it, you know, it depends on, dude, like, I'm, I used to do the little deals here now, but now I want to do deals here. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? I want to do deals here. I'll do your little deals for you, you know, uh, you know, let you rock. Right. You know, what do I Four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars? What? What? It's, it's a really, not really making it's a really, yeah. Is it going to? Is it going to follow relationship? I want your relationship. I want you to be my friend in the long run so we, we can try to help each other down the line. I don't want the five the thousand dollars. Wait, one thousand dollars, I'm gonna go pay a bill. Right. Like there ain't no comeback sure. from that. Because yeah. I feel like Jim, you you work with a lot of like new up and coming artists, right? Like all the time. So like, what's your what's your motivation for that? Like, why do you do that? You giving up your time? I mean, clearly some of our like pain. I'm, I'm, but I I'm just I'm just like that. I like to see people 
I just see people pop, man. I've been in this game for so long, and they say the game is to be sold, not told. And I know where we from in Harlem, that's not the game. We all put each other onto what the game is in Harlem so everybody can make money. It's always been the game. Whether it was your first pack of drugs you learned how to move or whatever, yeah. that was something that you learned together. Whether it was your first LLC you got, that was something you learned how to do together. When they start scamming, the whole hood knew how to scam. Like, man, this is what you got to do. You go get right. your green card, go get, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the Harlem way. So when it comes to the music, naturally my hustle is still intact from how we grew up, so I want to see everybody get on. I want to see all these youngsters get on and give them the opportunity to try to be as successful or not more, more successful than I ever was and things like that. That's what makes me feel good. I haven't I haven't got a dollar back from numerous. I put a lot of people in a position to make a lot of money and things like that. It's, it doesn't make you resentful ever? Nah, it makes me happy. It's, when it's you see, if you put somebody on and they don't give you the credit that maybe you feel like you deserve, you don't get... A little I don't bit. move like that because this is a small world. So when I when I see them, you got to see me. It's, 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 you <laughs> dig? The eyes don't yeah, lie. There's, 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 there's definitely been times where you put people on in certain situations and it, it was to their advantage and they never came back and said even thank you. But mm -hmm. they don't understand yeah. that I didn't do that for anything. For them, right? yeah. I did that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't do that for a thank and, you. And, I didn't do that for a dollar. I did that yep. because <laughs> my heart. That's what but that's the funny thing. Like, do that. my, my Jewish homie said it's a mitzvah. You know what I'm saying? That's what they call it. It's like, it's basically like, um, I'm going to do this because it's good. No matter yeah. what, you, you don't have to come we back. Don't, I don't do favors for favors. Right. Yeah. Mm. You did? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. If I do something for you, I did it because I wanted to do it. Now, if we agree on some shit like, yo, you do this for me, I got you. I'm gonna that's yeah, yeah, something, yeah, that's different, something different. I don't do favors for favors. Right. I do what I do because I can do it and I wanted to do it. Nobody gonna force me to do it. Nobody gonna bully me to do it. It's, it's just cause I wanted to do it. I'm. I, that's what type of person I am. I like to do for people. I yes. like to help people out. Right. Yeah, that, I mean that. That's. I mean basically that's that's what it is. It, it, it's in the same place when people come to me. If, you know, for vice. You know, I. I don't want nah. I don't want nothing. Just win. At the end of the day, just win. It was. It's gonna satisfy me. 100%, you know, what I'm, saying? That, I'm already see, on what I'm doing. Yeah. I got my. I, I'm doing what I'm doing. You heard? And I'm just giving you a little information so that you can do what you need to do. Or I'm right. doing something like you did. Like I ain't. You know, greed is, is, is a mother, man. You know, greed is. Ooh. And greed comes in so many different ways that people, ulterior motives start a lot of greed. Different, right. you did? People, and most have, people different, have different But there's opinions. good ulterior motives and there's bad ulterior motives. You heard? Like I, I could, in my heart, want you to excel. That might do something for me, but I know wholeheartedly that I'm just Helping you excel, but in back of my mind, I know, though, damn, I'm helping. Her. It's the trickle effect is still going to come back to me for being such a, a good person. Yeah. In that, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? You know that, like certain ulterior is not a really ulterior motive. You just know that's going to happen. Now, some people do things so hard to be like, I'm going to help her. It's going to help me, and whether she lose or fail, me putting her in a position is going to help me better myself and shit like that. There's a lot of evil people that think like that. They only help people that's going right. to better their position. Not better they self, but better their position. And that's not what we on out here. I'm wholeheartedly just trying to help you because I can. I don't need nothing from anybody at this point in my life. You know what I mean? I need the love right now. I've no. done so much shit in my life. All I need is <laughs> love. <laughs> you know what love I mean? is all you need. No I need bad news. Love. I want good energy around me. And, that's and, and that's it. Because I've been through so much. We all from Harlem. You know how it's not easy to navigate them streets of Harlem. And, nah. and, and be successful. Nah, you got you got you got the haters. <laughs> so look, you got the haters. Haters. So yeah. you done started all these businesses in Harlem. Yep. I get it. When you first started, you didn't have yep. the space in Brooklyn. But I'm sure over the 29 years, there's some real estate opened up in well, Brooklyn. You know what? It, I guess you just fell I, in I love with Harlem, right? Because it's just so dope, right? It was. Nah, it, it was so. It was <laughs> yeah, Harlem. <love. laughs> but you know what? Yeah, like you go home. Nah. Yeah. Now you, got, now you got Jim started. Now you got Jim. But you know what? It just, you know what it was? It just, it got comfortable. Like the four, the four locations that I have next to each of them is owned by one company. So that kind of works. So it's just easy. It's easy. So when it, someone will move out, you rush. Come on, please take the spot. We know you're going to pay the rent. We, we, you know, you've been mm. here a long time. There's one of them things. And then, you know, the spot on 7th Avenue, you know, you walk around home, like, you know, what's the real on that? I said, ah. It's convenient because everything I do is in the city. Right. 
Talk to me about building relations, like the business relationships, right? So you just said these landlords, these realtors, they're coming to you because uh-huh. they know you good for it, yeah. right? So as a new business, you know, or entrepreneur, you start in a business, like how, how important is that to develop these relationships? Well, it's, it's you know, developing a relationship with the, with the landlord is very important because you want to, first of all, you want to see what type of guy you're dealing with as far as landlord or whatever, you want to see if you have any egos. At the end of the day, they just want their money. You want to be straight up, oh, I didn't, can, you know, I didn't have the rent, no. No, if you got to go in that, your jury money, go get it, pay your rent, because you want to try to keep a good stand, because now, when it's time to renew that lease, mm. you can rock you, Val. Yeah. Mm. So it's a double-ass sword. Now you, your business is booming, but you don't have a great relationship with your landlord. So that, that could be tricky. You never want to get nasty with him. You never want to get disrespectful because at the end of the day, he has the upper hand. Just remember, when that lease ends, mm-hmm. he want to come back and rock you with that percentage. He can't. So now what you got to do, you got to leave that spot, find another spot, which now the rent is kind of, if you're paying 3000 whatever you're looking for now, it's going to be like forty five, forty seven hundred. So now, in, and at that time... On top probably, of moving. On top of moving. Then you got to do the spot, deposits. You got to do the deposit. So now... For, it, now, if the, if the rent is three thousand, so you're paying maybe two, three months rent. Was, now you might pay some pay brokers fee. Then you got to pay this fee. So you have to pocket like twenty thousand before anything, before even moving in. Twenty thousand. So now you, you take your mindset. And do I need to do that, or do I just try to be a decent tenant, be straight up with my landlord? No disrespect. You know, we're gonna go back. Let's do it the right way. Email. Listen, sir. How can we? How can we yeah, make that? Perfect example, perfect example with my landlords with COVID. So I go down to his office. I said, we talk numbers. I said, he asked me, what's the fair number? What's the fair number, Russ? <sighs> okay, I got that. Okay, no problem. Go back. I said, no problem. Because when you've been such a good tenant and they was understanding with the whole COVID thing, mm-hmm. and it, you know, so you want landlords like that. Yeah. People get into these bins. Don't you be careful with these greedy landlords, disrespectful, you know, because the one thing you don't want you don't want them to do is force your hand. You know, my younger days, you know, maybe you could have forced my hand, you know, coming, but now it becomes a mind thing now, it becomes a chess move now. No more checkers. Da, 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 da. It's chess now. Move slow now. Okay, how do I do it? Okay, let me do do it the right way. Because it can get tricky, it's like an investment. Mm. You know, when you invest in something, you know, I invest a lot of money. I don't need my employee. I don't need you going crazy. Yo, relax. It's, it's a money move. We can always get crazy. We can always get rah rah. But when that paperwork come, it says a different thing. They always said the pen is like the mighty salt. Da 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 da. Bang. That's what stands. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let me ask you about the the money, right? I felt yeah. like when COVID hit, there was a lot of conversation about businesses who had to close, they couldn't get the loan. For a lot of people, they didn't have their paperwork together. Mm-hmm. They didn't have their finances together. So how did you navigate that? I, I know you said you were good with numbers, but there's a lot of people who are not good with so, numbers, but got really good ideas. So what, what happened with that whole, co- like one of my businesses, like the little spa I got for little girls, like a little spa called Little Divas. I was due to open it two weeks before COVID hit. Mm. Hadn't got it registered, hadn't got nothing. So I took an L on that because I'm paying. It was already closed. I was renting rating for a year. So I'm already paying rent money now. A year, mm-hmm. rent, paying rent, not even open. So COVID hit. The old pain got to pay that rent. I didn't get to register it. So it's not even an so official an business, L. right? So the total L. So I took an L now. But just like we couldn't said, couldn't even write it off enough. Can't do nothing. Damn. No PPP nothing, for you. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Like it, nothing. But at the end of the, but see, at the end of the day, <laughs> like we said, we got to charge it to the game. Got to charge it to I, the game. I've been good. The, the business has been good to me. I'm not okay. It is what it is. That's that's that was my loss out of all my years. That right there. Even also, your lesson. But yeah, it was a lesson. You know, it was a lesson. May, should I have? As soon as I uh, uh, knew what I was going to do, get the paperwork in. Yeah. Right, so you know it came, but you know what it is, and and I admit to it, I got comfortable. Mm. We all get comfortable. Get comfortable, and it's, it's but it you know, takes something like that, that to, to put you put back what? on your game. That's yes, it. But this is what I'm saying. I'm not scared to admit I got comfortable. 
Dumb. Simple as that. Mm. It was too sweet. It, it, was, it, was, it was sweet wasn't the word. It was like, whoa, <laughs> shit, what? Chill. Paperwork coming six months after. What? COVID? Still had to pay rent. Right. Still had to this. Couldn't do, you know, couldn't do loan because this is what people didn't know. This is how the, I don't know if God went through the PP, the SBA. But pretty much couldn't do the, the PPP. The PPP, you have to keep records. Yes. Right. You have to do payroll. Right. Minority small business, we don't do payroll. Right. We, now do we write out a cash. We or, write cash or, or whatever. So you yeah, have so you have to do off. right. So you we have see, to do, you got that right. cool. You have to do the SBA. SBA show uh uh your tax ID number. And a lot of that stuff is also based on your personal credit too. No. No, it's no? about you no, just had to have a payroll. Pay, you have to show that you pay people yes, as, it's the paycheck. as employees under your job. Yes, the but, paycheck protection but, program. Well, I didn't, I didn't get none of that because we didn't we one of that we didn't go that route. Just say for you can open digital entertainment. Right. You have an EIE number. Mm -hmm. Pandemic SBA. Okay, my EIE number. Digital entertainment. I had it during the cover. Okay, cool. Here's a check. Mm -hmm. Simple that. But you know how the hood do. Yo, yo, listen to me. Shit up. People was calling. Me, yo, Russ. Listen, I told him. Listen here. <laughs> do Lord, not call. Do not call. Do not call up, me. Bro. Ask me about for the for no short paper. Fifteen thousand. 20,000, 10,000. To only get yourself what? in a headache in two years. 10, two, three years, everybody gonna have a headache about no, that dumb but shit. You talk, but, this, but, this is the, <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. Not knowing the value of your money. So mm. you calling me to do some shy shit for 10,000, 15,000? That's, that's still not meeting my, I got bills more than that a month. What you wanna go shopping? People are going shopping, going to Miami. Yeah. Like, you, wanna give huh? me a, you wanna give me a stack for helping you? Huh? Like, yeah, like, then you talking they got, yeah, I can you just give me three. Ain't nobody thousand. tell you, yo, Russ, show me how to do this, keep everything and, and put me in a loop somewhere. Let me get it. Get, can you help, help me with a business I'd if I get that? I'd you, I'd show, you know what I would have told them? Get five hundred dollars, open up a business, and I'll show you how you apply for the SBA. Mm hmm For free. Mm hmm For free. Without going to jail, no come and look for it. Because now they tomorrow. People the like that. Niggas just want a DR. Yo, yeah, they get this DR and this Balenciaga. You go, people, but, to, but they was doing that. Like, I'm in the hood of B Cam. Like, y'all doing what? Yeah, they going out of town. Y'all, what? Going crazy. She want the DR to get a face. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, like, but, like, but look what you're doing. You're not even smart enough. If I'm going to do the crooked side, let, let me get 50,000. Let me go open three businesses. Right. That's what I'm doing. That. That, yeah. That's what my head is at. What? My, my thought is like, let me get down. Let me dump but, but it that's in the what crypto. I'm trying to say, what? like, so in, 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 like, in the 90s, it, it, like, we're going to get packaged. Let that, yeah, get yo. it 50 there, I'm gonna get two birds yeah, and I'm coming right. back again. Yeah. We go, we up. You know? <laughs> That's what These kids a... don't think about nah, the re-up. They nah. never had to re-up. I you, told man. somebody that. Until what? you have to re-up, you never did real business. Where's... Nope. Scamming don't come with a re-up. No, it doesn't. Ah. SBAs don't come with a nope. re-up. Mm. But nope. every business in America comes, comes with, with a re-up. Re it's 50% back to the business no matter what. That's you're right. doing t-shirts, you're selling right. sneakers, you're selling cakes, you're selling... It's 50 cent back to the re-up. That's right. And these That's kids right. don't know what the re-up is. That's why they don't know how to run a business. business. Everything everything for the... You know, and you, and you, I mean, you can test. Everything for the what these kids is doing is clothes. They genius, they, but they, they, they don't have smarts. Yeah, we it's, were it's, talking it's, about that again last night. Heard like they not they lacking a lot of common sense. They can go take out all this money from out of nowhere, you know, off the computer, everything. But you know, none of them is do. doing nothing but spending that shit. Right. They have no hustle. That's that's the sad part. They don't. They they. It's crazy. They, get, I mean, they know how to make a shitload of money. That's correct. But right. they, they just don't know what to do burning that shit. You They're see, not flipping that shit. You see very very few examples of that. In this, in this, like the very, younger generation, younger very. generation. Why? What? Well, well, it's easy because they never had to re up. And, and besides that, the house training, home training, it all it goes back from it goes back uh -oh. to, uh, it goes back from home training. But naturally, as a black household, we don't know about financial literacy. Well, you write about that to the maybe maybe out to two percent, uh, maybe two out two out of ten, point you know two out of ten, because I caught it at a young age. I don't know. It just came. You was around a lot of hustles. You was around a lot of money. Right, I was. You was around a lot of hustles. It's different for my, people right. like you. Yeah, so, you know what? You're right. My father, my mother, my uncle, my brother. Everybody and, didn't and have then, that. 
Yeah, which, which is true. So now you got to hope it comes from the household. You comes from the so-called people you're around trying to try you're right. put on. You're right, because I remember you know? when I was a kid, and I remember I'd stay at my grandmother's house. You know, my mom would drop me at my grandmother's house, and my uncle, I remember this to this day, I walked in the house, and there were these big-ass boxes full of pork skins. The pig skins? The, the little, yeah, yeah. And pork he was rinds. like, yeah, you know, pork rinds. So he mm -hmm. was just like, that was his business. And he had the whole apartment, like a big apartment packed with boxes. And he was so excited about it that that made me think like, wow, I, I could really go out here and sell something like my uncle. You yeah. know, it's those little inspirations, like that little stuff that you get as you're young. You said starting early as 10, that's when the child's able to retain that information. But, you know, it's a perfect example. Nine, 10 years old, I walk around with my father, carbon paper. You know what carbon paper for? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go into the number holes. They used to use carbon mm -hmm. paper back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. Hustling with my pop, holding the, car, the box, heavy boxes. And we going in and out of number holes, mm -hmm. selling carbon paper. Mm. So mm. That, yeah, every number hole needed, needed that carbon paper. That was big paper. back then. It was, that, every day they were people just. And he probably looked and found a good connect and, and like yeah. with a cheap and price so he could make a margin on top boom. of it. We, 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 I, the whole I'm, city filled with number holes. I'm counting, I'm holding heavy ass boxes. Not complaining or nothing. And, uh, once again, I'm taking the lead of my father, mm. watching him. I'm quiet. There's no daddy, I'm tired. I wasn't hungry. No, I'm watching what he do. I'm watching the way he speak to people. I'm watching the way he say things to him. I remember somebody say some, said something. He said, yo, back the fuck away from my son. I'm picking up his attitude. Know what to say. Know what not to say. Nah, kids, kids watch their father. So I caught COVID a few weeks back. And it knocked me down for like two weeks. And then my son, like the fourth day, he came. He like, "Yeah, you really sick. I never seen you not getting up and going to work mm. for this many days straight. Like, yo, it's almost crazy that I don't see you telling me you about to go to work. So it just see it's yeah, you be by us doing certain things that it instills certain shit with our kids that you don't even know how to hit. And so they, he's watching the work ethic. So he knows to be successful out here. Yeah, you gotta work. Gotta yep. work." Dad been getting up and going to work since I could remember. So just see, just for him to see me laying still, it was like Superman is really there. And this is the craziest shit he's ever seen and shit like that. But it's like. The kids pick up? I was more happy that he said that to me than he could imagine because I know he's watching. Oh, the kids are aware, you know. They watch what you do. You're going to go out every day and hustle because they see you sacrificing this special time with them, you know. And they don't like, okay, I know he's not going to be there all the time because he's busy but then they could see it because I know one thing when I, I I like you know I got kicked out of New York public schools and I went down south I'd be down south and that was a whole culture of like you know like you know like white kids you know suburban and one thing I noticed about those kids is they were so happy to talk about what their father did mm -hmm. that the pride that the kid would be like yo my dad we're going to my dad's store and how it affected their social circle He's like, yo, we're, we're going over to Billy's. Pop got this going over here. So-and-so over there runs this. You know what I'm saying? And the pride. It's, it's and it builds on Because those same kids then have businesses now. Right. You know, because of what they saw early on. And what they were able to, with pride, say, my dad did this. He did this. Basically for me and for us. You know? And how infectious it is. It's, it's actually one of the most important things you can instill in a child is that example. It's, I mean, it's just just watching you. Like a lot of times, my young boys, they watch. You know, we get up like five thirty in the morning, five fifteen every morning, six seven days a week, like clockwork. I don't train their body to. They get up no problem, thing like that. Let's come open the shop. We got a thing. I will pull the gate up, and while my back is turned. One is there, one is there, mm -hmm. watch my back. When I go to the ATM, they do the same thing. I had to train them and train them. I had to explain to them why. Because now when you start explaining the rules and why and XZ, they start registering their brain. Their brains get stronger. And then they watch what you're doing. You're teaching them and teaching them like, yeah, because dad said this. Why we do that because dad? So now- Yeah, the little up, mini computers, they're over there analyzing the situation. And, and that's when they, because when they get older, when they do certain things, I tell them you gotta watch. It's the same thing that was told us now. Look out for your brother, watch out for your brother. But at the same time, now I got to teach them how to, to protect and vibe. I said, now, God forbid something happened to me, y'all. Y'all got to know how to run the shop. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to get that money. 
Right. And that and they be like, Dad, you gonna give me a shot? Why you, you can have it if you I said you can have it right now if you want, if, if you was old enough to run it. I don't care. Right. I'm done with it. I had my fun. You know, so but it goes back to that whole mentality about teaching them, watching, grow up, you know, to do certain things out the household, knowing to count numbers because certain pr- people in the household wasn't taught that from the parents, wouldn't have or whatever. So all that fall, you know, falls apart. And I look at my oldest son, you know, 30 years old now, has his own bourbon coming out. Right. Like, that's that's some different shit. You out there in Kentucky with the, with the big boys, your own bourbon coming out. Like, and he, he's out in Louisville. Like, he owns Louisville now. Like, he's he's like guard out there. He bought them championship. Like, he can't walk nowhere without them wanting to do something for him. When it comes to, like, business while who just want to, Give him million dollar lines of credit mm. just on his name. Mm. And they know they're trying to figure out where did all this come from. They see what I do. They respect me. So you respect me. And now you got to respect my son because it's going to come back to me. And I know what needs to be done in the right way when he bought his house, the, all the other moves that he's making. You're taking advantage of the opportunity. Do you, you got you know, to. You, you, you have to. Cause you, how, how, many of us do, how many of us do that? Do we take advantage of our, our name? This is what I'm saying. Like, I, this is a beautiful thing. Like, I'm loving it, but I'm also sitting here thinking about all the kids who don't have their dads in the house or their parents working or their parents are just workers, right? And mm-hmm. that's the, and not to say, and we know workers make I money. Mean, I mean, I didn't have so, right. my dad in the house. I was going to ask you, right? I, the only person that worked inside of my house that I can remember was my grandmother. My mother worked at a young age, but she ended up falling into the hustler category. My grandfather was also always a hustler. My uncle Ricky was always a hustler. My aunt Alicia, she was a stenographer, a stenographer, but that, all of that kind of stuff. So we was in the era of the '80s where it wasn't too many things going. But my grandma was the only person I seen hustle in the midst of a household of hustlers. So at some point, a kid learns what he wants in life, mm-hmm. and, and no matter what your environment is. Some of us get scared straight. Mm. Some of us get attracted to it. You dig? When it came to indulging, I got scared straight. I seen some of the most scariest shit within my family that made me say, I'm never doing anything got to do with coke, dope, none of that. I'm only doing weed and liquor. (laughs) And that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's a promise I kept to myself from young. And I never, ever tried anything but that. No eat pills, no none of that, nothing. You know what I mean? And we could say it's all on the parents, but ultimately the decision is within that kid. I'm telling you, because I was that kid. Like, we could blame a lot on the parents, but the decisions of God. No, you're right about that. God gives us all decision making ability. And at some point, as a child, it clicks in you the direction that you want to go in. That was, was, that's the same thing with me. Like, you know, like there was a time where I could have went down a whole different path. I was always on that, I was already on that path. But it was just one thing that I, I love music so much, but I, I wasn't a musician, but I wanted to be a part of it. And I remember my first business that I didn't even know anything about an LLC. I went into the record store and I opened up a book of record labels. This is like in the 90s. And I copied all the addresses down and I uh-huh. sent letters to like 200 record companies. Asked, I didn't even know what A&R meant. I just thought it was cool. Can I be an A&R? You know, and what happened was... It was like they would send me back promo. They wouldn't even answer the letter. I would just be on the promo list. So I'd get all these albums and, and stickers and posters <laughs> for free. And I was in a little town in West Virginia. So I was like, well, shit, I could sell this to the kids because they don't get this. So I started Uncle Beef's House of Beats. <laughs> and my mom, would get the, she would get the envelopes and be like, Uncle Beef, House of Beats. I'm, like, I'm in the ninth grade. Like, you know, That's like, crazy. you know what I mean? And I'm taking posters and stickers and, and, and advanced copy stuff. And I'm selling it to the kids in the school, you know? And I was like, that was, that, after that, <laughs> that was it for me. That was it. I was uh, like, I'm in the game. <laughs> Didn't know nothing about nothing, but I was like, I'm in the game, you know? And that, and that forced me to come to come back to New York, you know, and that was on my path. I was like, fuck that, I'm coming back to New York. And I, I did the same thing again. I went out and I wrote a bunch of, cause I was like, oh, it, it was some success. So let me do it again. I did it and the only person that answered the record to be an intern was Rockefeller Records. It was Shaka and Omi Ellie. And that was it, that was my path, 96. 
I want to say something about what you said about parents and not having father figures in the household. This is why we need or moms. more moms. But you want to speak. This to is this why again? we need more people like ourselves to keep taking responsibility in our communities as far as extending our arm to show fatherhood towards a lot of these kids that don't have that. That's mm -hmm. why when you look at Big Russ on 8th Ave and in Harlem and so many kids and adults alike for so many years, show him that type of respect because he showed that fatherhood that these kids don't exactly. have. You know what I mean? So we need more of the people like ourselves to kind of help those kids that are misguided and didn't have that type of household. You know what I mean? And I agree. When I grew up, it was, it takes a village, right? Mm -hmm. I knew, like, <clears throat> I could only stay on my block, right? My family, they were mad overprotective, right? I could only stay on the block and they had to be able to look out the window and see me, right? If they called me and I didn't even show, you know, show up, somebody in, in was outside. Line of sight, yeah. Somebody came outside and they was looking for me. But I also knew, like, if I went around the corner, it was still Miss Rose, Miss such and such, Miss yeah. such and such was going to see me and tell my mom. And then we get and in trouble. My, yep. And, yep. So it was like, right, it was like everybody was looking out for each other. When I first moved into on my block on 141st, like 10, 12 years ago, I was like, dad, this reminds me of what it, it was like. All the old ladies used to just sit in front of the block. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they came out with their chairs and they just sat there all day, knew what was going on. Everything was, you know, they were just watching the block. I don't feel that that's anymore. Not no more. That's uh, what I was going to say. I don't feel that yeah. anymore. No. Grown, grown, uh, grown, grown men need the same advice we give to the young men so they can okay. give it to them because they act just as young as... Okay. Uh, it's a different time kids. now. It's different, man. These, these, there's, there's a lot of men who are not acting the part as standing up for being a grown-up. Let's say like every... Man is like a kid nowadays. This it just baffled me and shit like that. So it's like we talking about the kids, but the grown ups need the same thing. The kids shit that's, nowadays. That's the, the, a forty year old now and a forty year old twenty years ago are totally different. That's well, that's because they said thirty is the new twenty, and so everybody took ten years off their life and stunted <laughs> no, their growth. Mean, no, the, 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 it's, de it's definitely different. Who the, the forty year olds that we saw. In the nineties, they have responsibilities. You saw forty year old that that we see. I'm forty five. You is not is not it's not the same. It's like the you same. did, my grandmother passed at fifty five. Right. And then I'm like, damn, bro. Like right. you, was, you see what like life yeah. has changed drastically when it comes to how we look upon ourselves when with age. You know what I mean? Like it don't register the way it did. There's no age is definitely not a number anymore. No, it's definitely nah. not. It's, it has no merit out here no more. Like, you know it's what I mean? It's sort of going back to what you said, you got to lead by example. Like, it, you know, because I see it even with you. I remember I used to go to the studio on 28th that you used to have, and I'd get off the elevator, a hundred dudes in there. You know what I mean? Right, you saw like, like fight through a hundred dudes <laughs> just to get through the gym. Like, wait, gym, just move out the way. You know? But I saw that they were only there because you were the guiding light to opportunity, you know? And it wasn't it wasn't a negative thing. It was sort of like a brotherhood. They were like little bros, you know. And I would, you know, eventually you start to know who's who, and you start to see like one pull you decide like, yo, yo, I can, I can hold the camera too, you know. And be like, oh, world, show me, you know. And everybody had their thing. They were just trying to find their way, but they needed that north star. But that's what the studio follow. was about. That studio was a shelter. Yeah, it wasn't really a studio where mm -hmm. people don't know. It was a shelter for. The niggas I kept the closest to me and even the people they had closest to them and I kept a lot of them out of trouble, a lot of them out of jail, a lot of them from getting killed just for being in the studio all night with me. I had a studio for like 10 years and mm -hmm. for 10 years we had shelter and food for a lot of individuals that I showed love to and I had love for and things like that. And that was one of the greatest things that I've done in my career was, no, was it, that it, studio and what, definitely I, was. what I was able to do for all of it people that I had around me because it's 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 about that like you know we we may be in an age where like you know the grown man ethic and the grown woman ethic is kind of kind of like lost from days past you know but as long as we have people such as ourselves that's willing to impart our information and provide an environment like even with me every every situation every office I go into if I get a situation where I'm in an office oh best believe there's 20 young black guys coming with me you know, the, the one of the one of the companies I work with, I remember 
one day in the lobby, there was like 25 people just waiting for me. But, but that's how it's supposed to be. That's yeah. the, open the door, let everybody in. Every yeah. business I own, I, 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 I've owned or a part of a person that I believe in gets ownership with me. Like I just opened a gym up. So my dude does that everybody see me with. He's in super shape and shit like that. That's like, the one carrying, make you carrying yeah. the things today? We going, no, nah, my other dude, <laughs> we going to open up this gym and I'm going to make you a part owner in this. But this is something you're going to have to get up Every yeah. day mm -hmm. and work. do and work. I, I, if I don't come here a day, this shit got to run. Did you ever fire, have to fire a friend that you work with? Did I ever have to fire plenty of friends? Everybody does not going to make it. Everybody's not equipped to do the job. This is a job we're trying to do. And I never, and I try not to keep nobody extra around me that's not in a position to get paid while they moving with me. That's, that's dead weight. What that's, about you, Russ? You ever had to fire somebody that? Well, yeah, you know Bob. She, no, 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 no. I mean, fire, fire, like oh. a friend, like somebody. <laughs> no, Bob. No, I'm saying like, like how like, 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 beef is like, you know, I'm bringing my people with me, right? So if there was somebody that you wanted to bring along with you, and you're like, yeah, but you just, you're not cutting it. Never. Never. I was never, never in a position to do that. Never. Well, you're doing it now with Grow, right? What did, tell me about Grow. That's, that's something that's trying to jump off now. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever. So we're just trying to, you know, put, put that together, put that whole thing together. It's like we're trying to grab the, like, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. like all the top entrepreneurs and, like, look, let's get rich our way, man. Mm -hmm. Let's do it the right way. Let's help other people get rich. Let's help other people get on because they're looking at all, like, if you down, they're looking at him as the boss. They're looking at me as, boy, well, you're going to become a boss too. We're going to show you how you get rich our way, but you just got to, you got to want, want to do it. So it's, it comes to that time, like, if you ain't trying to hang on and do what you need to do, do what you have to do, then we're going to have to, you know, get rid of you. Let me, you know? Let me say something, because I know we probably winding down, and I know you have a few businesses, but I know the main thing that you've provided in Harlem is these barbershops. So if I were... Kid coming up, somebody getting out of jail, or just somebody was looking for a job and thought that being a barber might be one of the ways out. Is there some way that we could get in contact with you to give us some type of information to start our process on being a barber or even a barbershop owner? Oh yeah, you can, all, you can, always, you can always DM me, Instagram, right. Big Russ underscore two. My account is not a private. Right. Open, DM me. I get every now and then I get DM. Hey, how do I do X, Y, Z? Hit me up. Mm. Always. So big that, Ru that big access, Russ underscore two. That that's very important to be accessible to people who oh, have yeah. ideas. Like you know, like well, as soon as Jim said that, I was like, wow. It's I put myself up. in. If I was you know a younger man, I was like, yo, like, okay, wow, it's an opportunity here. Let me make a business real quick. Yo, Big Russ has real estate. He got nine spots. Like, yo, can I talk to you? Can I put a vending machine in your spot? Like, how does that work? What do you want on the kickback from that? Like, how much is that real estate worth? Like, Speaking you know? of vending machines, I, I do have a vending machine business. I have an ATM machine business and a crypto ATM machine business. So if any of your nine businesses needed a vending <laughs> machine or ATM <laughs> machine, <laughs> we definitely can do that. Hey, hey, I, I, you know, it's funny. I started to see everybody with that little ATM thing now. So my and my antenna go up. I'm like, okay, get the ATM thing yeah. going. So I'm always in, but... That's but, what, how how do you spot trends? Like how what do you pay what, attention to, to to think like okay numbers and what but, well I start look you know it's like a, you start seeing things floating you start hearing things you know and you know I'm I, are you catching around Harlem just walking and looking into empty spots looking at this spot I'm very observant I'm like that so I caught on to the ATM thing now you know what I'm saying but I try to not to take on more than I can eat that's that's mm -hmm. very big people oh, I think that. Nah, because then it, then he's moving towards more of your time and doing more things, you know, and I got the young ones now, they balling, I got a, these games, so I try to, trust me, man, it, I, I got to sacrifice, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, man. definitely. So, got to sacrifice, man. And that's yeah. dope, man. I think that um, I'm glad I got a chance to sit down with you today. Um, it's dope, man. There's not too many people like you in Harlem who thinks like you, and I appreciate you for to stand, stand down for all these years and 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 not and and not you know keeping it sturdy like my man E would say man you definitely a sturdy individual that we need more of in Harlem definitely.
anything that you could use my name, likeness, or help, just give me a call, man. We're we, we here, we uh, here for that type of support. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. All of us as the collective. Like, Beef doesn't live in Harlem. It's okay, though. I'm always yeah. in Harlem. Yeah. We're in Harlem. <laughs> no, and, you know, uh, we're the Mining Diamonds Collective. You know, we definitely want to continue to support people right. other than just exposing you and bringing awareness to what you're doing but we want to be able to be in a position to help your businesses grow there's tons of things i'm sure ideas you have yeah you know we want to be a platform that can help you grow your business as well because it's all going to come back to us eventually now, right. I, I, pre- now, I appreciate this mm-hmm. i mean to do first podcast like this this was dope this was fun so when she uh, when she called me out I, I was excited to know him being a big fan of the Ballers song, yeah, I'm sorry. Everybody know Ballers. But this was this we was all be this was this was all about. I mean, there's plenty of stars that we probably will uh, interview, but it's more about the people who's bringing business to the community, the people who's providing help to the community, the people whose businesses, their business acumen is something that need to be showcased, and people right. need to learn about. And right. you, you definitely fall under that category of. Appreciate it. somebody that people, somebody that a person can look at, or a young man, a young person can look at and say, "Hey, he looks like me. It's not so foreign. It's like I don't have to be a, a yeah. platinum artist or athlete, or whatever. I can have an idea as long as I follow these rules, guidelines. You know, the guidelines. Yep. You know. So I, I have one question. I'm sorry, I, because you guys are all super duper motivated hustle mentality, entrepreneurs, go-getters, right? There's a lot of people out there who just don't have that, like, right? Like, who maybe have a good idea, but is really scared. Like you said, it's not an easy thing to say, I'm going to start a business. Like, yeah, you could go get an LLC, but can you actually turn that into a business execution. and make it work, right? And execute execution that, Execution right? is a black man's disease. And yep. so, right. Seriously, like I'm literally sitting here like, you know, I went to school. I was all that I educated, always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but was really always scared. Right. Yeah. Just like tip my toe in. Nah, nah, nah. I'm going to get my two every two weeks. I need that check. I can't do this. Yeah. I can't. Right. And I know there's tons of people out there like that. And I'm just saying, like, what do you say to those people that are not as motivated as you? Like, what is that encouragement that you could give to someone? <laughs> You got you you got to motivate yourself. You got to. I know it's hard, but it's it's the discipline thing. You got to get the motivation. If not, you're not gonna step outside of the box. It, it, what about the support system? Like, well, how it, do you find those well, people it, that can help you? You gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta keep yourself around that circle with the support. You gotta go. You gotta go with certain individual meetings and meeting group. Any mm-hmm. business mind. You gotta surround like me. And I'm talking like I know two billionaires personally that I could pick the phone up. Why? Because I was in that circle as a kid. Just got to get in the circle. Just go to them little business functions, this and that, and you'd be surprised. Go to a lounge with just business people hang out with that. You know what? People come from X, Y, they, they trading cars. Huh, here's a car. Give me a call. But what if you don't know the jargon? You Listen, can't speak that but language. Also from support, you got to, you, you, a support system comes from people seeing something that they want to support. So mm-hmm. it starts with you. It always starts self motivation, mm-hmm. right? We yeah, all move. hope to have a strong support system. Mm-hmm. But if you believe in what you have is strong enough, watch what come when behind you it. Project out there, mm-hmm. people see something that they want to support, and they're going to come mm-hmm. support you. Exactly. Those people are going to fall yeah. in line in your life you know, like you've never seen before. They'll come from the most unlikely places. Hundred percent. But it starts with you projecting yep. what you need support for. Can't sit back and like, oh, wait, nah, let's we'll make it happen. Listen, if I wake up and my, if I not have missed calls and missed emails, I'm doing something wrong. I feel nervous when the phone don't ring. You like me. <laughs> you like me. But I'll, I'll make 200 phone calls on the day. I'm not getting a bunch. I'll just drum up business. I say this all the time. Mm-hmm. The money's out there. You just got to figure out how to pull it out. Mm-hmm. Figure it out. Hell yeah. I definitely learned that from you. It's always out there. Yeah, the definitely. money's out there. So with that being said... This is our segment on mining diamonds. We're going to catch you all on the next one. We had a very great conversation today. Excellent. How you could build something from nothing and support the community while you're doing it. Shouts to the big guy himself. Appreciate it, bro. Yep. It's, it's a Harlem thing. You know? <laughs> hey, hey. Really, really inspired by him because he, you know, as a kid, I always looked at like, you know, 
big business. Like right. I was always fascinated with the idea of multiple businesses and you know, org charts and, mm -hmm. you know, and to see somebody actually doing it, right. you know, creating a brand for itself and, and basically being a pillar of the community, offering jobs. And I think it was amazing to have him here. The, okay. best, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, the best part for me is like, you always, I always thought it was just so hard, right? Like it was just, it has to be hard to start a business. Like, and to hear him say it's easy. And I know it's not easy, but it's not, it's not that difficult. Right. And it was great to hear somebody say like, yo, I had an idea. I had a vision. I got a little bit of bread up and I invested in myself. And that's the most inspiring thing for me because, you know, I have tons of ideas, you know, and as you always need that reminder that it can be done, it can be done. Yeah. And to see someone do it, he's live in the flesh. He's right here. He's accessible. He's not like, you know, one of these people that you can't touch. You don't understand nah, you what he's like saying. I feel like my cousin. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. <laughs> you so know, that's, that's, that's like, that. this is like, yo, 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 cousin Russ, what's good? Like, you know, like. Nah, that was dope. Shouts to Russ, man. Just just for the fact how long he been in Harlem and putting on for Harlem. Was there any good takeaways for you, like, that you um got out of that conversation? Um, just being persistent. Um, knowing you could definitely make something out of nothing. Um, just seeing this whole, the way he's thinking and uh, how he's how he started from a barbershop and then able to do so many other things and then incorporate the community at the same time. And just to hear how many things he's doing within the community, that's that's real big for me. Above all, like you said, business is something that we all can accomplish. It's not it's not hard, as yeah. he would say. But the hard thing to do is make sure that you incorporate the community and be there for the community. And he's a pillar in the community, and that's what I respect the most. Because if you know anything about me in Harlem, that's what I'm all about is the community and making right. sure the kids are taken care of as I have a book bag uh, back to school giveaway going on right now. So that's what we all about. So I definitely tip yeah. my hat to him. Tip my hat to his business acumen. Tip my hat for him including so many people within his business and showing people how to make that money on a, or just in a community. Big. Like, you know, it's, mm. it's big to have real estate inside of your own community. You know, Huge. And, you know what I mean? Just to, and just to see him doing it, man. So I have so much pride, you know, when I when I think about what he's doing and he, but chills, you know, when he said, uh, you know, I don't want I don't want the block. I want the city. Word. Like that, Word. that just was like, ooh, Word. that's what I'm talking about. You know about. why? Because I, I, I tell you this all the time. Like, I don't think I think big enough. And that's why I'm always glad <clears throat> you're in my circle because you definitely helped me. Think outside the box. Think outside the box. Think bigger than I ever thought for yeah. myself. Yeah. Now, one thing I did, uh, one thing I did take away, he has to take the time out to make sure he see his sons play basketball. Yeah. That is the biggest thing for me because I know how it is when my son was playing sports and me being halfway around the country and me jumping on planes or catching a private jet just to make it back to that football field so he could see that I walked on that field before the game was over. Right. It means a lot. So for, for, for me to him say that, he, did, he definitely got my It's a vote, balance man. too. It's so a balance. Shout, shout out to Big Russ, man. For, shout out to Big Russ, man. For his man. contribution. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on Mining Diamonds Podcast. Special Ooh. shout out to United Masters for having our back. Like, comment, and subscribe, you know, and, uh, you know, keep in tune. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get bigger, you know, and we're willing to share it and want to share it with you. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs>